Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Higurashi when they cry Chibokai Lego Gaming and you know how we do things around here, damn it. This is chapter 12 of Arc 5 in Meakashi. Basically, we're at the aftermath part of the game now. So if you missed the last episode, you might want to go ahead and peep it. Maybe you can pick up some clues that we might have missed or, you know, maybe you can get up to the same page as us. But, man, let's just continue. あれれ。みーちゃんもなんだか寝不足な感じだよ。だよ。うん。ネタの I went to the foot of the shrine to join the youth group in their search for the mayor. Since I knew there was no way who would be found, it was really boring for me. Well, just enduring sleepiness wasn't that bad. Not if you considered what Kimiyoshi had to go through since last night. He had been hanging from the ceiling and couldn't even fall asleep or sit down. Since he had to stay on tiptoes the whole time. The teacher explained to us that the mayor had gone missing and asked us if we knew anything. A couple of people said some things, but they were irrelevant. To me, this issue meant nothing, but it was all my classmates were talking about. I observed Keichi Maibara. I had no idea if any type of danger was drawing closer to him. Maybe I would call him again tonight pretending to be Shion? I told him some outrageous stuff last night so he panicked. But I was sure he had calmed down after a day. At that time, I heard a little girl's laughter. It was Rika Furude, the last survivor of the Furude family and their current head. However, she wasn't really treated as one. During the family council, she would often draw pictures or take a nap in the hag's bed. She wasn't even invited to last night's meeting. It was hard to believe that such a little girl was responsible for part of the curse system. However, even though she wasn't in a respected position as the head of the foot of the family, there were plenty of old people who worshipped her as the reincarnation of Oyashiro-sama. I had heard from someone that Rika Furude was rather odd and seemed to behave as if she knew she was that reincarnation. Maybe Takanasan had told me that at the library when she was alive. When Rika Furude became worried about something, the elderly people who worshipped her would make arrangements. It was very similar to the Sunozaki family, and it was also the same system as used for the curse. I wonder, does Rika Furude know anything about the deaths of Takanasan and Tomitake-san? What does she think of people sneaking into the ritual storehouse? Does she know who snuck in and what happened to those people? As the one managing the storehouse, it was possible that she noticed the intruders first. In fact, she was the only one who could have noticed it. She was dancing at the time, what do you mean? She must have passed on that information which was why the curse was executed. That foolish Keiichi turned the light on when we went into the ritual storehouse. That light switch could have been connected to some kind of an alarm. Rika Furude, the leader of the Furude family. Maybe getting to know her would be a good idea. I asked her rather directly. It was hard to tell if she understood I was asking her in the place of the Sonozaki family head. It was hard to tell if she understood I was asking her in place of the Sonozaki family head. Instead of as me on Sonozaki. She was roughed up after the scene, wasn't she? Rika answered. The news hadn't been made public, yet she knew about it. Although she looked immature, perhaps she truly was the head of the Furida family. Perhaps she was. I tried to be vague to see how Rika Furude would react. 
I had been thinking that she had nothing to do with the underside of Hinamizawa since she was always treated like a child. However, Rika had just said things about the incident which normal people shouldn't know anything about. That proved she belonged to the underside's network. She answered the question about Tomitake and Takano-san fairly quickly, but took a little longer to answer this time. Did she have to think about it? Shit. The look on her face never changes. It's impossible to figure out what she's been thinking. Her response was unexpected, especially after seeing all the old people get so furious last night. To trespass in the ritual storehouse was blasphemy against Oyashiro-sama. The village elders had said those intruders deserved to die. Yet the leader of the Furida family, who protected the sacred storehouse for ritual implements, said that if they felt remorse for it, then that was fine. Hmm. I recalled of how people thought of Rika Furida's father during the dam conflict. Yes. Her father was called an opportunist back then. He didn't agree with the Onigafuchi guardians, who had resisted violently during the conflict. Like father, like daughter. I aggressively grabbed Rika Furida by the collar. Huh? I laughed at myself. I was told the same thing by someone else and was now saying it to Rika. サイグデンは親白様の大切な場所なのです。勝手に入ったりとかしちゃダメなとこなのです。わかってるじゃない。そこに汚れを持ち込んだんだよ。あの4人は。悪い猫さんなのです。にゃあ。そうだね。悪い
お社様に仕える資格がないとお怒りを受けてねそれであんたの父親をたたり殺したんだよ Actually, you the line a long time ago. お社様はそんなことしないのですお父様はお社様のたたりで死んだんじゃないのですこんなのが最後の古出家の巫女だとはねお社様が心を安らかにできないのがよくわかるよお社様をお祭りする古出家の人間でありながら嘆かわしいみーが何を起こっているのか僕にはよくわからないのですよ I realized she was in a position to know as much as the other two family heads as proof she talked about this year's incident as though it was nothing Yet she could feign ignorance with a serious face. She sure is something. She's even better than me. I slapped her a few times and pushed her to the floor. Rika, having tumbled downward, looked up at me with tears in her eyes. So, 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 君よしに相談して簡単な鍵に付け替えてもらったのですあんたがその程度の手間を惜しまず頑丈な世情をそのまま残していたなら西宮殿への侵入を許さなかったかもしれない今回の一件はそれを忘れない方がいいよもちろんあんたと一緒に鍵を付け替えた君よし家当主にも責任があるんだけどね That last part was something I added on a whim I added to connect Rika's story to the disappearance of Kimiyoshi. I wanted to pressure her psychologically by doing so. Kimiyoshi ke toshu wa kejime o tsukete morau koto ni natta. Dakara kieta. Furude ke toshu ni mo kejime o tsukete morau koto ni naru yo. Rika was still on the floor, tears pouring down her cheeks. Ato nokotte ru no wa maebara keiichi dake. Koitsu wa furude ke no hou de tanomu koto ni suru. Rika hung her head. She seemed to want to say something, but she was afraid that I might be rough with her again. I doubted Rika Furuda was actually at the top of the curse system like the hag was. However, As one of the three family's heads, she was a lot closer to the underside of Hinamizawa than I was. By now, that underside was well aware of Keichi Maibara. I told the elderly leaders of the village yesterday in the meeting that Keichi Maibara was the last one remaining. I just told the head of the foot of the family the same thing, if threateningly. If my threat was effective, the curse of Oyashiro sama should very soon fall upon Keichi Maibara, and at just the right time, I would grab my enemy right as he took my bait. If the assassin came from the foot of the family, this girl would have committed the same sin as the hag. When that time came, I wouldn't hold back. I was going to make sure she suffered and then kill her. I've heard of a torture technique where you pound dozens of nails into a victim's fingers. I already found a restraining table and the tools for it. When the time comes, I will pound nails into your fingers. That gruesome anticipation radiated from my eyes and scared Rika even further. That's fucked up. That's beyond fucked up, dude. I wonder how Kimiyoshi is doing. I doubt he died from tiptoeing all night, but sometimes a human can go very easily. He already told me everything I wanted to hear, and he doesn't know anything else anyway. On top of that, he was responsible for spreading the infection that was the curse system of Oyashiro sama. His sins are very heavy. I really liked Uncle Kimiyoshi, you know? He had always been kind. The hag was so tough on her relatives, and that's why he was extra nice to me. When we talked yesterday, I was so happy to hear him say he would forgive Shion. He even said he would fight the hag to save her. That made me very happy. Don't worry. If Shion Chan feels bad about what she has done, she won't be demoned away. Leave it to me. I felt such warmth inside of me. I almost shivered. I was so happy, yet so very sad. For he continued to say that Satoshi kun deserved to die. 
He said those nice things because he wants to make me unhappy, since she was worried about Shion. Satoshi couldn't deserve to die because he was a member of the cursed Hojo family, but Shion Chan of the Sonozaki family did not. That's what he meant. In other words, to the leaders of the village, including Kimiyoshi, the members of the Hojo family are more contemptible than insects. They didn't care if they lived or died. Their sin was not only that they despised the Hojo family so, but also that they let that hatred infect the rest of the village. Therefore, everyone in the village deserves to be a victim of the curse of Oyashiro-sama. Kimiyoshi and the others created an environment that excused murder in that name. If that was so, if Takano-san and Tomitake-san hadn't committed the serious crime of trespassing in the ritual storehouse, then Satoko Hojo, the last survivor of the Hojo family, and Teppe Hojo, who had been hiding in Okinomiya, might have been the victims. That's the first time we see homeboy. Satoko Hojo. She was always around Satoshi-kun. She expected Satoshi-kun to help her every time she cried. Wait, that's what he looked like? Wait, that's who freaking Keichi Maibara took down? No way. She was one of the people who cornered him. If Satoko wasn't that much of a burden, Satoshi-kun wouldn't have killed his aunt. Somebody told Satoshi-kun to commit that murder, and to hide the evidence of his connection to the mastermind, Satoshi-kun was demoned away. That's what Oishi thought. If Satoshi-kun hadn't killed his aunt, maybe he wouldn't have been chosen as last year's victim. Because the commands were vague, after all, the curse of Oyashiro-sama fell upon the Hojo family as a whole. It didn't matter which member of the family died. His aunt had a terrible reputation in the neighborhood. She didn't communicate with her neighbors, and she was always throwing fits, and there was nothing nice about her in any way. Even if Satoshi-kun didn't kill her, the curse would have fallen upon her sooner or later. Their aunt was the first victim. There needed to be another Hojo to calm the curse. According to a rumor, their uncle was living somewhere in Okinomiya with his lover. However, Okinomiya was a little different from Hinamizawa. The Sonozaki family was powerful there as well, of course, but it would have been more difficult in Okinomiya to demon someone away. So naturally, Satoshi-kun and Satoko, who were still in Hinamizawa, became the targets. Which one should be cursed? That was simple. Satoko, of course. She was snobby and lacking in manners. Everyone in the neighborhood liked Satoshi-kun, even if he was the son of the Hoji couple who betrayed the village during the dam conflict. Compared to Satoko, he didn't deserve to die. Therefore, the actual victims of last year's curse should have been his aunt and Satoko. Satoshi-kun was suddenly all alone. His mean aunt and mean uncle were gone. His sister, who was a burden to him all his life, was gone too. Satoshi-kun was such a nice person, he would be sad, although he would realize he was finally free. But time would heal him, I would even help. He didn't have to live in his house in Hinamizawa. There were plenty of empty rooms in the apartment block where I lived. I could find him a part-time job too. He didn't need to go to school in Hinamizawa. He could go to school with me in Okinomiya instead. He wouldn't know his way around or really anything about the school there, but guess who's got his back? So I would be with Satoshi-kun all the time. I would show him my shortcut to school, we would go shopping, and I would teach him many different things. What an unbelievably happy ending. Satoshi-kun had been suffering so much, and I had been pushed away all my life. But we would finally be happy. I enjoyed these sweet delusions, but I didn't have any more time to waste. I was sure there were plenty of old people who had been trying to get a hold of Oreo all morning, and who were going to try to catch me after I got home from school. Actually, the phone had been ringing constantly while I enjoyed my happy thoughts. When I answered the phone, I casually listened and replied. As I planned, Keiichi Maibara is now known as the next cursed victim within the underside of Hinamizawa. I also tried to let them know that the disappearance of the village chief had something to do with the fact that he changed the lock on the ritual storehouse's door. All the authorities in the underside came to realize the seriousness of trespassing in the storehouse, after all, one of the heads of the three families got punished. One of the phone calls was from Oishi. 
He had also heard about Kimiyoshi's disappearance and he knew it had to do something with changing of the lock. I'm impressed. He had some pretty good sources, but all he can do is catch whatever information he can get. There is no way for him to find out where it's coming from. I would call Keichi Maibara again later tonight. Some of the more aggressive villagers may have already started to take action around him. I'm sure that by now, Keichi is feeling the danger that's coming toward him. So at the end of the first arc, when Keichi goes apeshit on Rena and Mion, is Keichi actually going apeshit on Rena and Shion? But then what happens at the end of arc 2 when... <sighs> Who would it be? It was like... Was it quote-unquote Mion, who was actually Shion, that was uh, locked up in that apartment building and the crazy bitch that we thought was Shion back then is actually Mion and killed her then? Wait, yeah. Okay. I would have to be careful that he doesn't get killed easily. If I can catch the enemy before they beat Keichi, I can use him again as bait. We're gonna get the answer to that question at the end of this arc, so... Let's see where this leads. Keichi Maibara. I haven't known him for that long. He's funny, if not intelligent. He will never replace a Toshikun, but I do think he's fun to be around. There's just one thing I don't like about him. He rubs my head far too fucking often. His hand is as warm as a Toshikun's hand, which is why I can't stand it. But that's about it. Keichi Maibara isn't Satoshikun's enemy, I don't hate him. He's fun to be around. But I wouldn't shed a tear for him if he became a victim of the curse. Damn. I won't prevent Keichi Maibara from being killed. But I won't kill him myself either. I had made arrangements for the curse to fall upon him. But I never told anyone to kill him. Well, I suppose I did tell Rika Furida to take care of Keichi Maibara. Wait a minute. To avenge Satoshi-kun, I'm doing exactly the same thing as the hag did. I'm using the exact same system that kills Satoshi-kun, Keichi Maibara. I'm just using him. I told people to let the curse fall upon Keichi, but I've been giving him appropriate warnings. I'm going to help him if he tries to live. If I catch all of my enemies. Maybe I'll let him loose. He's different from Satoshi-kun. Satoshi-kun was tricked into killing his aunt and was killed himself afterwards so there wouldn't be any evidence remaining. I won't kill Keichi Maibara. That's how I'm different from the hag. Evening was turning to night. I had to get dinner ready. I had to eat so I would have enough strength to take revenge. This place was far from the town. It would even get isolated during winter because of the snow. This is where, uh... The minister's son was, uh, grandson? Was, uh, being contained when he was kidnapped. It's not unusual for a household like this to have two or three refrigerators. There were plenty of groceries left in them. I was glad I didn't have to go grocery shopping. I could hear the chorus of the Higurashi. People often say that the sound of the Higurashi brings back memories. But for me, it's the exact opposite. I've only ever heard the sound of the Higurashi in Hinamizawa. Therefore, the sound of the Higurashi to me is Hinamizawa. The sound reminded me that I wasn't supposed to be here, that I could not be here. That was when I heard the doorbell. Because there was a good distance between the house and the gate, there was both a doorbell and an intercom by the ladder. Wait, what? It had a security camera too, so we're not at the same location then. <laughs> Something as modern as a security camera monitor in this old-fashioned kitchen looked rather strange. I turned the switch, but nothing appeared on the monitor. I tried to check the plug, but there were a bunch of cords going behind the refrigerator, so I couldn't even do that. The doorbell continued to ring while I tried to figure out if the monitor was broken or if I just didn't know how to turn it on. I only felt like answering the door depending on who it was. It would normally be easier to pretend to be out, but that wouldn't help me. I was waiting for my enemies to show up. I couldn't just hide myself in that case. The hag was supposed to be sick in an extremely bad mood. 
I had already sent the word out that she didn't want to see anyone. So who could it be? I made up my mind and turned the intercom on. If it was someone unwanted, I could just turn whoever it was away. Imagine if this is Satoshi-kun. But I had to act normally so I wouldn't arouse suspicion. I had to act normally. Hi. She didn't tell me her name, but I recognized her voice. Oh no. Wait. Wasn't Satoko the first one to ask for soy sauce? Or was it Rika? Shit. Soy sauce? I almost screamed, but I controlled myself. I took a moment to think about the situation. Hinamizawa was far from most stores, so sometimes neighbors would share seasoning and stuff with each other. Damn, Shion, you just fucked the entire game up. Damn! The village sometimes got snowed in during winter, but Furude Shrine was quite far from this house. It was rather odd for her to come all the way out here on her bicycle just to get some fucking soy sauce. Maybe she was using it as an excuse. Maybe there was something she wanted to talk to me about. That was when I noticed a piece of paper that was on the refrigerator door next to the intercom. We still have plenty of homemade soy sauce in stock. Feel free to come to the Sunozaki house if you want some. The hag must have given that flyer to everyone. One of our relatives sent her a barrel of soy sauce. If you want some, bring a container. That's what the flyer said. I see. This would explain it. There was a handwritten note on the bottom of the flyer. The soy sauce is in the storage area under the floor. Give them as much as they want. There was a storage area beneath the floor. When I opened it, I saw a barrel of soy sauce alongside a funnel and a ladle. I didn't want Rika to notice anything suspicious at this point. I decided to share the soy sauce with her. Well done. Okay. As I headed there, I heard the doorbell ring again. People didn't pay much attention to safety around here in Hinamizawa. People didn't think too much about locking the doors. But as someone who's lived in a town, I've always locked everything. To let Rika through the inn, I would have to go outside, so do it then. Rika smiled at me. She was holding a huge soy sauce bottle. She acted like I never yelled at her, got violent with her, or made her cry at all today. Or perhaps she came to curry favor, thinking that she angered me. I invited Rika to the front door. I told her to wait for a moment and try to take the bottle. But Rika took her shoes off and walked into the house with the bottle in her hand. She looked at me as if begging. I guess she wanted to pour the soy sauce into the bottle herself. I didn't want her to come in the house, but I suppose I didn't want her to wait there alone either. If she came to the kitchen with me, I could keep my eyes on her. And so, I brought Rika to the kitchen. We walked down the hallway. Stun gun to the neck, bitch! <laughs> I only heard my footsteps. I stopped suddenly and turned around to make sure Rika-chan was following me. Rika bumped into me. I made sure she was right behind me and started to walk again. Tap, 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 tap. Tip, 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 tip. Tap, tap, tip, tip. Rika must have been having fun matching her footsteps to mine. Even when I quickly sped up, our footsteps matched perfectly. Tap, 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 tap. Tip, 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 tip. Tap, tap, tap. I stopped suddenly. Tip, 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 tip. Rika stopped suddenly too, after taking an extra step. When I turned around, Rika smiled at me. Our footsteps matched perfectly, 
and when I stopped suddenly, I heard her extra step. I've experienced such footsteps before. It was making me feel uncomfortable. But now, although her footsteps sounded the same as the other ones I had experienced, I saw her when I turned around. That was the difference between them. I left the storage door open so we could see the soy sauce barrel. The memo said she can take as much as she wants, but I wasn't sure there was enough left. I crouched down and tried to open the lid of the soy sauce barrel. Even when I crouched down, I could hear Rika's extra step. Mm, when I turned around, Rika was very close to me. But eh? Who was this? I saw Rika, but it wasn't Rika at all. It was like when I switched with my sister. The outside was the same, but the inside was different. Did Rika have a twin sister? I was confused for a moment. That was when Rika sprayed something from a small bottle into my eyes. Oh, you motherfucker, you got Tomitaki-san! I felt a terrible pain in my eyes. And suddenly, tears poured out and my nose started to run. Oh, it's a... It's a, it's a Pepper spray! I couldn't stop sneezing either. As I stumbled around covering my face, I then realized I was attacked. I shut my eyes tightly for a moment and opened them again. Rika was about to grab my hair to drag me down into the floor. I shut my eyes tightly for a moment and opened them again. Rika was about to grab my hair to drag me down onto the floor. What? When Rika saw me open my eyes, she sprayed at me again. I shut my eyes to avoid the spray, but my nose still breathed in the substance. I avoided the pain in my eyes, but the tears, the runny nose, and the sneezing continued. Shit! Ah! My brain isn't working quickly enough. However, when I finally understood that I had been attacked by Rika Furude, my brain started to grind into motion. Rika Furude knocked me on my back and got on top of me. I tried to escape from I tried to escape from her by rolling on the kitchen floor. As I rolled, I hit an oven, a huge jar, and destroyed a pile of something on the floor as I fought back. But Rika did not let go of me. She stayed on top and restrained me. She was sitting on my stomach and I felt an intense pain and pressure. She sure could fight well. I still couldn't see shit. Rika had the upper hand, my eyes were shut and I was in real danger. As I tried to blink, I saw Rika's expression. I didn't know Rika Furude all that well. I only knew her from the few times we met when I went to school as Mion and from the things I've heard from other people. But as far as I knew, there was no way Rika Furude would ever do something like this. This is just impossible, impossible, impossible! No, I can't fill my head with that word. I have to calm down and figure out what to do next. Shit, I'm too much of a mess to even think right now. I tried to peek at her face again. Still had the spray bottle in one hand. What I didn't expect was the thing on her other hand. How could I mistake it for anything else? It was definitely a syringe. When Rika realized I had regained my eyesight, she pointed the spray bottle right at me and let loose with it. I shut my eyes tightly and tried to ignore the pain. But that was when, even though I was blinded, Rika made a miscalculation. I started swinging wildly, dog. <laughs> she had sprayed at me from such a close distance that she had inhaled the substance as well. I heard Rika sneeze and realized that it was my chance. Even if I couldn't see, I knew she was right there. I hit Rika's face a few times. When I felt Rika's weight shift, I escaped. Oh shit. I then got my stun gun ready. Rika must have inhaled just a little of the spray. She wasn't sneezing anymore and was glaring at me instead. Oh shit, been picking a fight, bro. Rika's expression didn't change, but I was sure she was disappointed that her surprise attack was a failure. Rika flinched just a little. But she was still holding the spray bottle and aiming it at my eyes. She was trying to use the spray first, and then give me the shot. 
I didn't know what was in that syringe, but it was a clear liquid. It had to be something bad. She wanted to take my eyesight, get on top of me and then give me the shot. If whatever was in the syringe took a while to take effect, I might have the chance to fight back and seriously injure Rika. But Rika's surprise attack told me that just being injected was more than enough. In other words, whatever the effect, it would start to work immediately. Therefore, I wouldn't be able to fight back against her. It would probably either knock me out or kill me. In any case, what I had was equally deadly. My stun gun was very powerful. Just one shot would be all it took. What happened before was proof of its power. <laughs> Rika knew my stun gun was a lot more powerful than her spray. She was being extremely cautious. Imagine if it's out of batteries now. I threw a pile of newspapers at her. The pile wasn't tied together, so the newspapers flew all over Rika. I jumped at her immediately after. I shoved my stun gun into her and pulled the trigger. Rika spasmed and fell to the floor. You fool. Hesitating in a fight where a single blow wins? Only amateurs just glare at each other. You don't have a single clue about how advantageous the first strike is when a single blow can decide everything. The spray bottle rolled on the ground, but she still had the syringe. Rika was down, but I couldn't let my guard down either. I kicked her in the side and clambered on top of her. I took the syringe. I held Rika's arm down and gave her the shot. Okay, so it's like a paralyzing effect, I would say. So when the crows were eating at her at the shrine, she was still alive, maybe? My actions could hardly be called gentle. I injected her violently. I injected everything that was in the syringe. Rika began to convulse. I stood back and watched for what would happen to her body. Of course, I still had my guard up. While I assumed that the drug would incapacitate her immediately, I didn't know exactly what kind of reaction she would have. <laughs> After a few more convulsions, Rika unsteadily got to her feet. That's ridiculous. How can she even stand? I looked at my stun gun. Damn it! The power was on the lowest setting. Maybe it had been readjusted when we were rolling around on the floor. I changed the setting to maximum. Rika turned pale and started sweating all over. I didn't know his exact effects, but if Rika had given me the shot, I would be the one experiencing her symptoms. She looked really sick, so obviously she must have been feeling awful too. She couldn't even focus. She was very wobbly and had her hand on the wall. She had lost her balance and it must have been hard for her to even stand. She didn't look so brave anymore. Rika wobbled some more and moaned as if she was about to throw up. Anyu? Damn. Rika looked scary as she moaned and wobbled, but at the same time, she looked kind of funny too. Certainly, she hadn't even dreamed she would be getting the shot herself. As the man sows, so shall he reap. That's what you get! <laughs><笑><笑><笑> あんたにはあの国台を使ってやろうとずっと心に決めてたんだよね。あんたが自分の薬で死ぬのが早いか。両手女子に釘を垂らく食らって痛みで行くのが早いか。よし決めた。じゃあ会場を移そうか。場所を
もっとも抵抗しなくても辛い目に遭うだろうけど<笑>残念だけどあんたの誘いは断るわこの冷血女が What she said wasn't anything I would expect to hear from the Rika I knew. But I didn't hesitate. I had the advantage, so I didn't need to worry. Besides, this was coming from the last survivor of the Furude family, one of the three families. That sudden change somehow felt natural. そのフラフラな体で包丁一本で抵抗してみせる立っているだけでも限界なくせにそうねあんたの言う通りお前なんかに召し取られて殺されるくらいなら悪いけどお先に退場させてもらうわ退場<笑>できるならしてごらんよ It was clear who held the advantage here But despite that, an odd thrill filled both of us. We lost our minds wasn't a fitting phrase for the people of Hinamizawa. It was a feeling of release when modern demons could stop pretending to be human. Yes, this was a mad banquet of demons. The savoring of blood and devouring of flesh. Attended by the head of the Furuda family and the head of the Sonozaki family, the old families whose blood is closest to madness of the demons. I stood in front of the hallway so as to block her escape route. The windows had gates and the door had a safety chain on it. If she turned around, I would hit her with my stun gun. In this situation, what did Rika Furude mean by taking her leave? Rika got her knife ready. I expected her to aim at my stomach when she attacked, so I took a stance with my stun gun ready in hand. Rika, however, suddenly turned around. I carefully watched to see what her next move would be. Rika put the handle of the knife on the wall and held it in place. What was she doing? <laughs> Rika reared her head back and slammed her throat against the knife on the wall. Her blood splattered all over. Rika bent backwards repeatedly and let the life slash at her throat. Again and again, her neck and chest were dyed red. I had always thought blood was darker, but her blood wasn't dark. It was so bright. I must have been confused, but it looked pretty. So, what do you say if this is what fucks the Oyashio sama curse up? Like, this is why the whole village got to go. After doing this several times, Rika turned around. She wasn't supposed to go this way, is what I'm trying to say. Her eyes were wide open. She didn't look like she was from this world. Her face looked like something both living and dead, both real and artificial. It was very scary, eerie, and above all else, pale. Although her face looked unearthly, it was a very appropriate face for a demon. I didn't have a mirror, so I couldn't tell. But I was sure I looked exactly like her. Rika continued to violently slash at her throat. It reminded me of someone trying to break a huge piece of ice with an ice pick. That was exactly what Rika looked like. The white chips of ice coolly flying through the air. What I saw before me was a beautiful sight. Every time Rika struck her throat, tiny drops of red blood splattered the boring white world around her. It was like a dance. I love this tune. A dedication dance by the final head of the Furude family. The demon's last chance of dedication to Oyashura sama. Upon seeing that literally blood curdling dance, I let out a fierce roar. I had no reason to do so. I was howling like an animal. We were like animals trying to kill each other, both getting covered in blood. And inevitably, as one convulsed in a pool of that blood, the other one threw back its head and howled. My body shivered with the joy I felt inside of me. This was death, the most final of judgments, and it was right before me. The demons howled, screamed, and roared. Their roars faded 
and my voice started to change from the voice of a demon back to that of a human. As a demon I roared, but as a human I sneered. Rika was covered in blood from her neck down. Her blood was pouring out, making a little noise. Rika was still staring into my eyes. I stared back at her. I wasn't sure there were still eyes though. They were no longer human eyes, but the eyes of the dead. Rika. No, Rika's corpse vomited blood from her mouth and nose and smiled. Then she dropped the knife. She stuck her hands out and turned her palms upward. Her wiggling fingers reminded me of an insect's legs. Those fingers reached for her own throat. I had never seen anything like it. I had never seen anybody do this before. Tomitake-san did, but we didn't see it. Because Rika was scratching her own throat. She was ripping her own throat apart. Maybe that wasn't a good description. She was trying to rip out the inside of her throat through the opening she had made with the knife. Her fingers found the biggest tear. Rika smiled. At least, that's what I would have called it if she were alive. She ripped open the tear in one tug. <laughs> Upon hearing my scream, Rika died and fell on her face. Into the pool of blood. That was it. She didn't get up again to show me her throat. I stepped back from Rika for this body and bumped into the wall in the hallway. Rah! I roared again in admiration of the ritual dance of dedication of the head of the fruit of... Bitch, what did you just say to me? I roared again in admiration of the ritual dance of dedication of the head of the fruit of the family. Shut the fuck up. Joy ran through my body and my blood rushed through my veins. Did you level up? I then realized I had disposed of the heads of the three families, the core of the curse of Oyashiro-sama, and that's why the entire village is fucked now. Everything was finally exposed. The curse of Oyashiro-sama and its masterminds were all exposed. I disposed of the leaders of the three families, who all killed Satoshi-kun. The head of the Sonozaki family died of a heart attack. She was at the bottom of the well along with a wheelchair. I apprehended the head of the Kimiyoshi family, he would continue to tiptoe until he died. The head of the Furuda family died in a way that was perfect for the final head of the three families of Onigafuchi. I did it. I accomplished my mission. I defeated all the masterminds who killed Satoshi-kun with the curse. Everyone. Satoshi-kun, you were powerless. You didn't have the means to fight back. Those evil people who simply sneered while they let you die, after marking you as a member of the cursed Tojo family, I will never, ever forgive them. They believed you deserved to die because you were one of the Hojos. As long as it was done by the curse of Oyashiro-sama, they didn't care how you were killed. I will never forgive those people for creating this world. What could I have done to save you, Satoshi-kun, huh? I couldn't save you. Shion Sonozaki couldn't do anything else at the time. If I was Mion, not Shion. If I was Mion that day, I could have saved you. Mion could have saved you. That's right, I remember now. Shion. She said she wanted to eat red snapper sashimi that day. I was supposed to eat that. But Shion pouted and cried. That was why I let her switch, just for that night. I did it to make her happy like a big sister would. Shion was never treated well, so I felt bad. That was it. I was being a good fucking sister, that was it. When morning came, the world had been turned upside down and it had remained so until today. We weren't twins anymore. The one with the demon was Mion and the one without the demon was Shion. What was that supposed to mean? Wait, <laughs> wait ma, listen. I'm Mion, not her. You can tell us apart, right, Ma? Look, can't you tell I'm Mion? Come on, Ma. Tell everyone I'm Mion. I'm Mion. Don't call me Shion. I'm Mion. I am. So, no, Toki. I was 
あの夜親類たちが集まって何をするのかただの宴会じゃないって知っていたんだ知らない知らない本当に知らなかったのはあなわけないでしょあんたあの日だけ嫌にしつこく絡んできたじゃないタイの刺身なんて食べたことない食べてみたいいつもミオンばかりずるい私にもって普段ならおとなしく納得するくせにあの日だけ必要に知らないの本当に知らなかったのあんな恐ろしいことになるなんて思ってたら絶対に言わなかったはっどうだかあんたはいつも妬んでたじゃないミオンばかりいい目にあってずるいってだから私が気を利かせてたまに入れ替わってあげてたんじゃないあんたはそれに満足していなかったより一層妬んでいったんだそしてあの夜の意味を自分だけ知り私から奪ったんだミオンを奪ったんだミオンを返せ私がミオンなんだ私がその先ミオンお前はシオンなんだよシオンミオンを語るな偽物が I kicked the bars of the cell repeatedly while I roared. Compared to my roar, the metallic noise of the bar sounded like the cry of a little puppy. I had been convinced by something so stupid. The tattoo of the demon was just a way of telling us apart. Even without that tattoo, I'm Mion. That's right, I'm Mion Sonozak. I gathered my hair and put it in a ponytail with the yellow band that Mion used all the time. Since I didn't feel my hair on my neck, I felt like I could think more clearly now. Two Mions looked at each other through the iron bars. According to our sibling rules, that was never to happen. Yes, there was only one Mion and one Shion. There could never be two of either at the same time. だから語るな二度と私を語るな聞いているのかシオン聞こえているのか聞こえているなら返事をしろ私に返事を届かせろシオン I took myself back on this day シオン admitted she was シオンミオンであることがこんなにも素晴らしいなんてすごいよ頭の回転が優れた気がするそうだよミオンは万能なんだミソカスのシオンとは違う落ちこぼれのくせに下手なミオンのふりなんかしやがってわかるでしょあんたにならシオンはいおねシオン called me sis and so I was ミオンあー The demon who had been asleep deep inside me was finally allowed to wake up The demon roared, and my whole body shivered to express its joy. Sion, Anta には罪がある Anta は今までミオンだったそのザキ家の鬼を積むミオンという強い立場がありながらサトシ君を救わなかった救おうとしなかったサトシ君を救うための百億の瞬間があったはずなのに Anta はそのすべてを見殺しにすることを選んだんだ私は許さないお前を許さないお前が私だったらサトシ君を救えていたのにお前が私を奪いサトシ君を殺したことを私は絶対に許さないシアンは死んだ後、サトシ君の胸に見合う殺し方をしてやる。前を一番残酷に殺す方法が何なのか、今日から毎日考えて過ごしてやる。シオンは私がそれを思いつくまでのわずかな日々をいつ殺されるのかどう殺されるのかに怯えながら過ごすがいい。簡単には殺さない。無ごたらしく殺す殺した後はサトシ君と同じ井戸に放り投げてやるそしてサトシ君にあの世で謝ってこいそれが私を語り続けてきたことへの報いだ報い報いお前の罪うわあああああああああ While I was putting on old newspapers on the floor to absorb the blood, the phone rang. I didn't want to answer, but maybe I should, so this should be Satoko. I should answer it and talk to whoever it was. Hi, Sonozaki. I'm sorry. 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 I'm sor
but I realized right away that it was Satoko. Ah, Satoko? どうしたの？夜分遅くに申し訳ありませんわね。うちのリカがお邪魔してませんこと？ Ah yes. Ever since Satoko Hojo was abandoned, she had been living with Rika for the day. Of course, she would get suspicious that Rika hadn't returned yet. Ah, 来てるよ。あら、まだお邪魔してますの？もう夕飯の時間ですのに。ねえ、サトコ、実はね、今日さ、ちょいとおかずを作りすぎちゃってね。リカちゃんにも夕食を振る舞ってるんだよ。え、そ、そうなんでございますの？うん。サトコも来なよ。サトコの分もあるからさ。リカちゃんはもう食べてるよ。もうリカったら、わかりましたわ。ちょっと片付けをしてから回りますわね。ではごめん遊ばせ。I would be pissed at Rika. I mean, assuming that this scenario had been true, of course. うん。待ってるからね。Like you've been invited to dinner at Shion's place or like a friend's place, and you're not calling me. You started eating already. Like what the fuck? Okay. ケイチ、さっきから呼んでるぞ。電話だ。その崎さんから。そ、その崎さんってどっち？あれ、妹？そんなのは知らん。自分で出て聞きなさい。も、もしもし、見ようか、しようか。私です。シオンです。こんばんは。シオン、その。ゆべはすまなかった。つい興奮して。He must have been worried about how I hung up the phone so suddenly last night。私たちは運命共同体なんです。互いの無事の確認が自分たちの安全の唯一の保証なんです。ああ、それについては同感だ。だから私たちは互いの知っている情報を共有する必要があります。高野さんたちみたいな死に方をしないために。I heard Kate swallow loudly. では、昨日の続きを話します。もう怒らないで聞いてくれますよね。ああ、大丈夫だ。Kate agreed to be quiet and listen. I explained the dangerous situation Kate was in once again. Just like how some evil people in the village attack Takano san and Tomitake san, they might attack us any day. It was ironic, of course, that while I was warning him, I was also the one who made sure the curse would fall upon him. 互いに何か気になることがあったら報告し合いましょう。互いの持つ小さな断片を合わせていけば、ひょっとすると高野さんたちを殺した、いえ、過去の連続事件を解決する鍵が見つかるかもしれません。うん、そうだな。確かにそうだ。では、まずは言い出した私から行きます。最近。誰かに監視されているような気がします。I was making this up. I just want him to realize how urgent the situation was. と言っても気のせいかもしれません。でも一応報告します。今は気のせいだと思っていますけど、もしもケイちゃんも同じように誰かに監視されているように感じるなら、これは気のせいじゃないのかもしれませんから。そ、そういうことなら安心しろ。少なくとも。It seemed like nothing had happened to Keiichi today, at least. Now that the heads of all the three families were gone, it was possible the curse system had been destroyed entirely. If that was the case, then Keiichi might not be attacked after all. But if there was someone who did want to attack him, that meant part of the system was still alive. In other words, my mission wouldn't be accomplished just yet. KT is like a litmus test in this situation. I would know whether or not all my enemies were gone, depending on if KT got bitten. This sure is a very useful man. After that, I went along with what KT said. I made sure he was fearful of Mion, as well as all of the three families. I explained to him the possibility that the whole village was involved, and that the curse of Oyashiro-sama might be some sort of system. 
Then I remembered Xi'an wouldn't know too much about the disappearance of the mayor, so I continued. お父さんが電話で<笑> けっちゃん。私どうしよう。どうした話せよ。俺たちの間で隠し事はなしだろ。ごめん。あの隠すつもりはなかったんです。ちょっとその言うのが前後したっていうか。俺たちは仲間だろ。怒ったりしないから正直
what I just said scared even me. Killing our loved ones first to harm us emotionally and only then kill us at the height of our suffering. Wow, I felt something crawling up my spine. That's awesome. Hey, it's an awesome idea. I must not be human anymore. I really am a demon. A human could never think of such cruel things. That would be one incredible hell. Your close friends dying one at a time after being tortured? And after all of that, you yourself get killed? <laughs> what a great way to destroy someone's life. Why was I getting so excited about this? Because I could get going with that plan right away. <laughs> リカちゃんって猫さんの心配しすぎなので僕がきっと何とかしてあげますですよ。で、リカちゃんはそう言って、ごめんちょ。俺、俺ちょっとリカちゃんのことが心配になっちゃって。あ、はい。そんなに心配でしたらぜひ
I genuinely thought of myself as a superior being, having transcended the realm of mortals. But when my eyes met with Renov Yuga's, I felt what I did long ago with tennis. Why? Why did I feel that way with Rena? I had heard that in the animal world during battle, animals glare at each other to display their strength. Only humans have to punch or kick each other to feel superiority or inferiority. Most animals can tell just by glaring at each other. In that case, could it be the same with Rena? Heichi climbed up a ladder and tried to peek into the window on the second floor where Rika and Satoko lived. It was my job to hold down the ladder. Rena cautioned me to hold on to it tightly. Rena ran off after that. When I looked up, I saw Keiichi trying to open a window, but all of them were locked. Keiichi asked me from the top of the ladder. ふるでけの本当の家だよ。両親が亡くなって以来、ずっと放置してあるそうだけど。あ、そうか。リカちゃんのご両親って亡くなってるんだよな。サトコも親はいないよ。親白様のたたりってことで、両親が崖から落っこ
It was Satoko who I hated most of all. She cornered Satoshi-kun. Huh? And as a result, Satoshi-kun disappeared. She started it. Now why would that have asterisks? And I don't think the amount of asterisks matter. Are you blocking more than one word? Hmm. She caused it. If only she hadn't been there. Just as Zika, Furude and Satoko had lived happily, maybe there had been a happy future for me too. Maybe Satoshi-kun and I could have started our lives together in Okinomiya. Yes, if I look at both the beginning and the end, it's so obvious. Satoko's existence caused everything. Satoshi-kun had to kill his aunt because of Satoko. The three families used that need to create the curse, and then they killed him. The police were convinced that he just ran away, but he would never do that. He was the type of person who always did his best at everything, all by himself. He was doing the very best he could for his only sister, yet he was forced to vanish. He worked so hard for Satoko, and though he was living just for her, he was erased. Poor Satoshi-kun. He was so underappreciated. That girl knew no gratitude. She was cursed. If you got near her, you would meet the same fate. You would be cursed to die or disappear. That was really it. She was the main cause behind it all. She wormed her way into Rika Furuda's good graces and that was why the curse fell upon Satoshi-kun. She should have died first. Then Satoshi-kun would still be alive. If he was alive, I could have done something for him. I can't forgive her. I can't forgive Satoko. I can't forgive that girl. There can be no peace with her. There can be no peace. She was the perfect target for the curse of 1983. The curse of Oyashiro-sama. Rika Furude, the reincarnation of Oyashiro-sama. Rika was dead. The reincarnation of Oyashiro-sama had died. There was no more god in Hinamizawa to deliver the curse. I'm the one who has to deliver it now. I am Mion Sonozaki, the head of the Sonozaki family, one of the three families of Onigafuchi. Now that the, all the heads of the three families are gone, there is nobody to surpass me. I will deliver the curse of Oyashiro-sama and nobody else. I will deliver it. I am the curse. I have become Oyashiro-sama. I felt hot bubbles boiling over deep inside of me. I could tell the demon inside of me wanted to roar. I noticed Keiichi was looking down at me. Calm down, Mion. He can't tell what you're thinking. Calm down. Calm down. At that point, I heard footsteps coming closer. I saw four or five adults accompanied by Rena running towards us with flashlights in their hands. One of them opened the lock on the cabin door and we all went inside. Of course, there was nobody there. Satoko and Rika lived alone. I doubted Satoko would have left a note saying that she was going over to the Sonozaki house when Rika was already there. But it wouldn't be fun if she had. Because of that, I hurried into the room ahead of Rena to make sure there was nothing left behind. The rumor of Rika and Satoko's disappearance spread around the village quickly. More and more villagers gathered at the foot of the shrine. Acting in place of the head of the Sonozaki family, I commanded them to search the village. The villagers nodded and scattered. How long had it been since the last time I was truly me on? I felt so pleased that my body almost went numb. Lots of villagers went in and out of the shrine. They yelled at each other that she was nowhere to be found. Some suggested other places to look and they all left. They made a lot of noise with their comings and goings. Members of the women's association brought out huge pots and gas cookers from the storage and got ready to cook for the men. That was when I noticed Keiichi unsteadily walking toward a copse of dark pine trees. What was he thinking? How stupid of him to be alone on a night like this. If a person responsible for executing the curse was nearby, he wouldn't come back safely. うん、ありがとうございます。婦人部の皆さんがお味噌汁を作ってくれてますので、召し上がって休んでください。ミオンちゃん、あの二人って自転車をどこに止めてたんか知ってるかい？そう。
多分境内の階段の下じゃないかなまさかあの階段を担いで上がったりはしないでしょうないんだよねどこかに行っちゃったんだろうかね自転車で遊びに行ったなら遠くかもしれんな町かだとすると雛見沢の中にはいないかもしれんなそういえばリカちゃまがいなくなったってのは誰が最初に気づいたんだうんああケイちゃんだけど急に虫が知らせたんだとか前原屋敷のせがれさんかなんや、怪しいなそういえば、前原家は来てないのかこの一大事の時に。前原家は懲戒未加入だから、青年団の連絡網に入ってないんよ。なあ、すったらんしょうがな。And they skipped the Watanagashi Festival as well, right? おれ。His dad was sleeping through it, I think? はいったろ、懲戒。ああ、あれさね、連絡網に名前が載ってないだけんと違う連絡も新年に作ったきりやんね。途中から越してきたから乗ってない。前原のせがれさんの虫の知らせってのがどうもな。第一発見者が一等怪しい言うやんね。そのせがれはどこ行ったんかいね。さっき松林の方にふらふら行くのを見たよ。誰か呼んでくる ?Conveniently, I saw k e i c h i and Rena walking back toward us. k e i c h i どこ行ってたんだよ。ケイちゃんまでいなくなったのかと心配したよすまん It looked like nothing had happened to Keiichi If so, that's fine That means I took care of all of my enemies おいやおやおやおいしい匂いが漂ってくると思ったらこれはぜひご商売に預かりたいですね I heard a loud sticky voice of a middle aged man It was Oishi. He must be confused about this year's incident. The scale of the curse this time is nothing like the previous ones. Oishi's information network is about equal to or better than that of the elders on the town council. In other words, he could easily uncover a rumor that was circulating through the underside of the village. He must have came here to see if the disappearances of Kimiyoshi and Rika had something to do with the changing of the lock on the ritual storehouse's door. Damn! The police will come for me sooner or later. I am Mion Sonozaki. By removing all of the heads of the three families, my enemies, I have become the head in their place. I can't allow Mion Sonozaki to continue existing. I will have to destroy the existence of the head of the Sonozaki family. When I destroy my own position, that is when my revenge will come to an end. More than likely, I will have Oishi to witness my final moments. My eyes and Oishi's met. Damn it. He thinks I'm suspicious already. You're right, Oishi. I did it. Mion Sonozaki, the head of the Sonozaki family, is the culprit. Two pages back to back. Let's see what we got. 195. Arika Furude, and I'm assuming the other one is Satoka. She was the head of the Furude family, but she never even appeared at the most important meetings. Even if she did show up, nobody would ask for her opinion, so it never really mattered if she was there or not. A legend in the Furuda family says that if their firstborn child is a girl for eight generations in a row, that the eighth girl would be the reincarnation of Oyashiro sama. According to Takano san's research, Rika Furude is very likely to be the one. Surely, she must be an important icon in the cult of Oyashiro sama. The true believers are devoted to her. So it's quite surprising to me that Rika Furude herself was the assassin. It's unbelievable, really. It's just too abnormal. Usually, a VIP like her wouldn't be the one to assassinate someone. It's quite possible that it was a Rika Furude lookalike. From the way she moved, she seemed experienced in fighting. It's not normal that a small girl like her would jump me without faltering. I just got lucky because I had a stun gun. Without it, I don't know what would have happened. 
she was far more skilled than she looked. Was she trained as an assassin? Or oh, was it a body double? Everything is a mystery, including that creepy syringe. What's going on? I can't understand. She was like an apparition or something. Did Oryo Sonozaki know of her existence? What is hiding on the underside of this village? That underside might run deeper than I thought. At this point, I believe that I can complete my revenge by destroying the curse system entirely. That means I have to eliminate the heads of all the three families, the successor Shion and the assassins who are after Keiichi. Although Keiichi is completely unguarded, he hasn't been attacked so far, even though I told everybody that he was one of the trespassers. In fact, it's me who was being attacked. Rika Furudi attacked me. According to my theory, Keiichi should make for a very attractive bait, but nobody has done anything to harm him. Since Rika Furudi attacked me, it might be that opposing the Furudi family is a greater taboo than trespassing in the ritual storehouse. Rika Furudi had said that intrusion wasn't that big of a deal. She sounded like she was going to let Keiichi walk. And after I accused her of that, Rika Furudi attacked me that very night. Are there two different factions? Does one handle trespasses in the ritual storehouse, while the other protects the religious doctrines of the Furude family? Nah, that doesn't make sense. Tomitake-san's death must have been caused by the Furude family's injections. Rika showed me the effect of it herself, clawing out her own throat and dying like that. But Tomitake-san shouldn't have been subject to the curse, at least according to the system of the Furude family. I don't understand why Keiichi hasn't been attacked. Did he have something exempting him from the curse, unlike Takano-san? Just like how only Satoko Hojo was spared? Keiichi is a friend of Rika Furudes. So, does that mean that if you were close to her, you wouldn't be cursed? Was she more important than the whole system? That's impossible. The hag was at the top of the curse system. Rika couldn't have been higher up than her. Scribble, scribble. Are there multiple ways to determine the subject of the curse? As there as many curse execution groups as there are subjects, and do they all work separately? Ah, it's a mess. None of my theories add up. If I mess up my reasoning, I might make the wrong person the target of my revenge. I don't understand who the enemy is or how Satoshi Kun was made to disappear. How much did the hag know? That really was a huge loss. I have so many things I want to ask her. I killed her by accident. Shit! In that respect, I've already failed in my revenge. The underside of Hinamizawa really does run too deep. Scribble, scribble. The whole page is blacked out with scribbles. And that's gonna have to be it for this episode of Higurashi. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We got some new perspective to the events of the disappearances with Kimiyoshi and Rika and Satoko. Also, that scene with Keiichi and the ladder and Mion slash Shion makes a lot more sense now. Really good to see her perspectives, her thoughts during that little segment. I can't wait to see what else this game has in store for us, but uh, I guess we'll find out, all of us, starting from next episode. This has been your boy Kyogre Gaming, man. I'm out of here. Love y'all. Deuces.